What up, my wonderful family? It's a beautiful day in Eastside San Diego. Yeah, so we out here. We go by the name of GQ Family. You could also find them in multiple social media platforms. Yes, sir. G E E Q P H A M. GQ Family. So we got a special guest with us today. So he's gonna take us around the neighborhood and he's gonna talk about his career in the rap industry. He's also one of the dopest rappers I know in San Diego. Got GQ fam in the house. Yes, sir. Hey, where we at, my boy? Well, in East Dago, this is my hood right here. This is where I grew up, where I was raised, and everything since I was three. So, what what is it like out here? I mean, it's it's getting better. It's like it's really diverse out here. Like you got a section where it's like Asian, like a little Saigon, like a Vietnamese town, and then right after that, you got like a Somalian town. And after that, you got like La Mesa, Lemon Grove. It's really diverse out here in East Dago. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, how long you been in the rap game? Uh, I've been doing this since 2003. Yeah, so about 20 years. About 20 years? Yeah. So, um, any obstacles, any challenges, uh, you know, facing uh, the, the rap game and industry? Hell yeah. Like, I mean, it's getting better, a little bit better now. But like, if you're Asian and you rap, back in the days, the shit you was kind of looked down on uh, because you're trying to be another culture or whatever they want to say. But I mean, I grew up here. This house raised. Yeah. I, I grew up loving Bone Thugs, Tupac. Like those are my uh, top artists that inspired me to do music. So I felt like I want to do it where I could explain my story as an Asian person. That's yeah. What made me start. You know, this is where I grew up at. I mean, one of these apartments is where I used to ditch school every day just to go smoke weed, kick it with the homies, writing raps and shit. Yeah. So this is the hood. Okay, okay. Sir. Mexicans and uh, blacks and whites too. Yeah. They're pretty much scattered around, but around here is mostly like Vietnamese and Asian and shit around here. All right, all right. So you dropped a, uh, was it a, a single? Was it a Cali Nights? Yeah, Cali Nights with my boy Heartbreaker and Don Juan. Yeah. yeah Heartbreaker is another uh, artist coming up out of San Diego. Don Juan, he's from LA. Uh, we linked up with the other homie. Just dropped that a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Cali Look it up. Yeah, yeah. Peep that out, man. It's dope. Um, I already checked that out, and uh, man, that's that's slamming, folks. So uh, check that out on the YouTube channel, GQ Fam, uh, Cali Knights. Show gonna give you that Cali vibe, that San Diego vibe for sure. Yeah, Go yeah. Can you tell us, um, you know, a little about uh, you know, the the work in that and the Cali Knights? Uh, what type of work was involved and, and who was in it? I mean, that shit, it really just happened because, uh, like, one of my boys from L.A., we was just talking about music, and one day he sent me that song with Don Juan on the hook, and I, he was like, you can kill this, and then uh, that same night, I sent it back to him, I was like, yeah, I could kill this, I sent it right back to him, I was like, oh, shit, and the next day, I hit up Heartbreaker, he was at the studio, so I was like, hey, listen to this, you hop on this and he listened to it oh shit yeah i'm gonna hop on this and just that's yeah. just how it happened and we shot the video like the week after yeah yeah okay okay so you have uh different styles in rapping you rap fast and you rap you know uh normal can you tell us about like you know rapping fast and stuff like that it really depends on my mood when i hear the beat like if it's like let's just say it was like slow beat and yeah I, I would rap fast just so i don't make it boring or if I have a dope melody, I would make the melody and go slow. It just really depends on my feeling and the beat and shit. Yeah, but okay. But I do both. 
Yeah, straight up. So where we at right now? We're at Mead. Um, Mead, this is where, uh, this is that apartment I'm talking about where I usually get school like every day and meet the homies. Uh, the homie Youngster and the yeah. homie Huey. This is like their spot, but it's right around the corner from here. Okay, okay. It's so gonna take us right there and mm -hmm. show us uh, uh, like where I really started smoking weed and writing raps. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So here we are in Mellow and Mead. Chilling there all day, and then like dope fiends come knocking. Cause my boy, I guess he was doing his thing. So you have dope fiends come knocking all day long. Shit was crazy, bro. Like 2 a.m., 2 p.m., it don't matter. They come in and knocking all day long. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's hot out here right now. It's about what 80 degrees right now. Yes. But we're gonna walk over over here to the uh, little shaded area so we can really chop it up. Okay, I just okay. Wanna show y'all like the, the streets and shit, the neighborhood. Yeah, but right here. Yep, that was the window right here. That's the other window right here. Like we would smoke weed over here. Yeah. And the, the dope feet would come right here. So boom, they just do that little thing right here, transaction, whatever going on. Boom, this is their room. And then over here, because we're weed smoking. Boom, it's over there. Every day though, every day. Every day. <laughs> every day. Undisturbed, huh? <laughs> business owners opening up and taking over now can you tell us a little history on uh you know the 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 area here uh saigon and you said it's uh mostly uh catered to uh, vietnamese yeah uh, they started calling this little saigon like recently like maybe uh three or four years back yeah they have a little sign and everything got approved by the city so now they call this whole section little saigon um before because everybody came from vietnam and shit during the war like my family uh because they didn't they wasn't trying to get killed so we they ran on the boat they came over here uh they just started working two or three jobs saved up ran a cheap apartment for like 500 bucks a month saved up and opened up their business and that's how we how we made little saigon yeah yeah you got any favorite uh uh, uh vietnamese restaurants there's a few, it depends what you're trying to eat. Like if you want pho, there's yeah. a couple spots, but the original spot is pho wild, right across from this street right here. It's pho wild, that's the original pho spot. But there's a couple joints though, like you want a uh, family dinner type of style, like mm -hmm. rice with like five different dishes. There's new E right here, Saigon, across from Hoover, uh, Maxine, there's a bunch around here. It just depends what you're trying to eat. I also go around San Diego County and I do, uh you know, little food tours and, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, I'll be going out there tasting, you know, and you I find some. With and shit? Yeah, hell yeah. I'll be, I'll be finding those gems out there, man. I can tell you some mm -hmm. spots, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I love pho too, you know. There's a couple good spots right there. It's kind of hot to eat pho right now, though. Yeah. But it's fire, though, like uh, on cold days or after you drink or something for the hangover. Yeah. yeah that shit is fire, though. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm over there. I'm on the west side, so, you know, we got our little uh, Vietnamese community, so they got some bomb ass pho over there, you know. Yeah, the west side is Linda Vista for the people that don't know. Yeah, Linda Vista has a little section, too, with the Vietnamese supermarket uh, and everything in that McDonald's plaza. Yeah. yeah. yeah they built this whole uh, building. Back in the days when I was uh, chilling at that apartment, that's when they started building this uh, whole building right here. It became like a bunch of Vietnamese businesses in here and even apartments up top. Yeah. Like up top people live and then at the bottom it's all businesses. And then they have like a drug school or something up there. They got all types of shit in here. I'm gonna go to this mini mart over here. Right over here. It's been there for hella long, but it used to be like a, a video store, like a Vietnamese video store where we go rent movies and shit like that. Yeah. Right here, uh, these people took over, like they, they 
shipping packages and just selling like drinks and shit like that. Okay, okay. What do you see yourself in uh, in five years? You know, with the with the music, rapping. You know. In five years, yeah, I mean, hopefully, I can find some like new talent to push. Uh, that's like my main focus now. Uh, I mean, I, I always love music, but I feel like there's other ways that I can connect with music, which is like finding new talent and pushing them. Yeah. yeah. That's my goal in five years. That's what's up. You got the wash and go laundry mat. Oh, yeah. this is, uh, one of the original ones. Like this is where I used to do my laundry every time, right here. And I would live all the way on Van Dyke. So yeah. we would drive all the way over here to do our laundry. I don't know why. Maybe because the uh, the movie store, but but we always did it right here. Okay, okay. It's all good, it's all good. We're trying to get some drinks. It's hot in this mother. So we're trying to find a, a liquor store market. So what can you tell us about this beautiful Asian community here in East Side San Diego? Man, there's a, there's a few uh, pho restaurants, like food joints. A lot of people like to come down here to eat, like from Mara Mesa, Linda Vista and stuff like that. Yeah. Got a bunch of Vietnamese food, pho joints, some like gum fung, that's like a family style dinners with the rice and like seven different plates. Uh, we got a couple of uh, Vietnamese supermarkets, shit like that. That's what you'll find down here. Okay, okay. Hey, my boy, uh, have you done any uh, uh, food tour videos? Nah, but I've been wanting to, though. I always want to do, uh, like, foodie stuff and shit, man, because I love food, too. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, I, actually, I actually do uh, food tours throughout San Diego County. Yeah. So maybe our next video, we could do one together and we could... You could take us one of these spots here that uh, that you recommend, yeah. and then we'll you know what I'm saying we'll grade it. Uh, we'll show everybody the food, yeah. uh, what GQ fam likes, yeah. and um, that's gonna be uh, in the future videos. Shit, only if you can show me where the best carne asada fries is. Hey, I got you, I got you, man. I know a few down here though, <laughs> like Roberto's, yeah, uh, Colima's. Uh, there's a bunch down here too, though. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. Uh, Roberto's is uh, definitely my top 10. Uh, Colima's as well. Yeah. Um, you got a neighborhood out there on 43rd. You guys know what I'm talking about? Across the street from the Jack in the Crack. Oh, okay. Yeah, but there's a lot of fire Mexican food around here, though. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Even I can show you some shit. Yeah, yeah. But, all right, that's the original pho restaurant right here. Like the first pho restaurant ever in San Diego. Oh, wow. Uh, there's one by your hood, too, in that. Uh, that Vietnamese supermarket McDonald's Plaza, they have a different owner. So they were connected, but now they're like not connected. So, but this was the original one though. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. There's one in my neighborhood too, man. One of my favorite places to go to for pho. Especially like my boy was saying, when you're hungover, you're not feeling right, it's a little sicky. Yeah, you go there. Cold day, cold rainy day or something, that's fire. Get some pho. This is all uh, Little Saigon right here. Like five more blocks down, three more blocks down that way is all like Little Saigon. That's what they call it now. Like oh, okay. Vietnamese area, Asian area. What advice can you give to the you know, to the future generation, getting into the rap game industry, you know, any obstacles, challenges, you know, that could endure during the whole process? Shit, my advice is just to keep working, like keep recording, keep making your music. Don't don't listen to what other people got to tell you, uh, whatever you believe. As long as you got talent, man, just keep pushing that shit. Uh, don't follow the trends. Don't, oh, cause he rap like this, you want to rap like this? Nah, just be real to yourself just keep making that music man because in the end once you go viral or trending or blow up you gonna need shit behind it to back it up because you're just gonna go viral and that's it you won't have yeah. shit to back it up so you, you need to keep working to have shit to back it up like build up a catalog yeah that's what's up so 
back in the days when I rap, people was laughing at me, like, talking about I want to be black or uh, I can't do this, I can't do that because I'm Asian. Yeah. But I just kept pushing that shit until people thought it was dope. Like now, my mom think it's dope. She sees that I do shows, sell clothes, drop music videos. Like she likes it now. Before she wasn't about it. Yeah. She thought it was like a, you know, like a, a black thing. Yeah. And, uh, but that's where I grew up. That's how I grew up. So I just, I just love that shit. I just love music. Period. So, how long would you say you were comfortable as being, you know, like a you know, like a good rapper? It, it took a while, man, because, because in the beginning, I kind of like did it on the low. Yeah. Like did it low key. And that's when the internet first started. So I, I wasn't going around asking my family and friends what they think of the song. I would just post it on a website like bitrapper.com or asianrap.com and had people from other states, other countries tell me that they like it. And that's what kept me going. Until now, my city hears about it. So that, that's how I started though. It took a minute though. It took like probably like five years or something. Five Back years. then it was slow. Like yeah. we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have Instagram, we didn't have YouTube. And the only thing we had was that website that we posted on. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how I, uh, that's how I started right there. Yeah, it's crazy because uh, now there's TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. It's a lot easier now. But yeah. you just gotta be consistent. That's why I say like just keep working, build your catalog. Because nowadays you need hell, hella content yeah. to post all the time. Yeah. So that's what it is now. Back then it was nothing like that. Like there was no music videos. You just made a song and dropped that shit. And if it blew up, it blew up. Yeah. yeah, yeah.